Staying on the theme of uh, training uh, students and thinking about uh, the next generation of uh, uh, data scientists and how they interact with, uh, uh, with more um, domain scientists, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Alex Smith, who's a professor uh, at uh, the University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire. Uh, Alex has a PhD in uh, mathematics from UC Berkeley. He's been a chair of the uh, UW Eau Claire uh, Department of Math for the last 10 years. He was part of a team of faculty from six campuses that planned a UW online master's of science uh, degree in data science, which is one of the reasons we were very interested in getting him to uh, talk to our group, which is completing its second year now, so relatively young program. He's also the academic director for the uh, UW Eau Claire data science program. And in this role is the academic advisor of approximately 100 students enrolled in this graduate science program through uh, UW Eau Claire. So thank you. Thank you. The, um, thank you. This morning at the keynote, there was the uh, punch card. Well, when I took my first computer science course <laughs> in New Mexico State, you know, the late uh, 70s, I used those. And so, Times change and move on. Um, uh, like it says here, I'm the, I'm the chair of the math department at UW Eau Claire, and I've been teaching undergraduates for since 1990. Um, and I've been in the math department there since 1990, and so over the years, I've had this conversation, this reoccurring conversation with high school students, or perhaps um, maybe a freshman who's thinking about uh, becoming a math major. And so, you know, the scenario is someone who's 17, 20 years old has the math department chair, we know what can I do with a math major? And so, my kind of conceptual model is there's this um, function machine, which is a four-year institution where we spit out undergraduates. <laughs> and my select audience, you know, self-selecting is high school students or freshmen who are interested in math. And, you know, they ask me, so what can I do with a math major? And I have a 10-minute you know, speech about all the types of careers that you can have if you go through math. Um, and and uh, we spit out math and computer science majors. Math and computer science are not the same department at UW Eau Claire. But there's a lot of correlation between you know, the interests of the student. And so in the last two, three years, I've added data scientists as one of the outcomes there, whatever that might mean. Uh, I find that uh, high school uh, juniors and seniors do know, have heard about data science. And so the advice I give people that age is when you're young, you know, 17, 20 years old, take a lot of math and statistics, computer science, coding courses. And when you're out after your four years, then whatever it is that the data scientist is, you'll be ready for a job there. But, you know, really, if you kind of step back at a higher scale, what really happens after college graduation? You know, it's the verities and realities of life. Things don't always look the same when we step back at a different scale. Um, and so here's the four-year undergraduate institution again. All sorts of inputs, not, not people interested in math and coding, uh, whatever. You know, we, we instead produce people with a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Business Administration, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, um, bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Social Work, you know, the list just goes on and on. And when you kind of get to that scale, you realize, hey, not everybody um, has uh, in interest at that uh, point in their life in, in math and uh, coding. And so, you know, there's this uh, black hole of life events. This is an image from um, Slate Magazine, what happens when you fall into a black hole yeah. article. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your life happens. Um, Career changes, family. You know, Kazantzakis would say through his um, character Zorba the Greek, full catastrophe. So, you know, people start to ask as they're starting to fall into the black hole or fall through it, you know, where's my life going? Um, and, you know, wouldn't that sexiest job of the 21st century be something that I should be uh, aspiring to? you know, several years out of graduate, out of undergraduate school. So, you know, back in, I don't know, it was probably about 2012, the Harvard Business Review 
had this article where they dubbed data science as the sexiest job of the 21st century. And they um, talked about meet the people who can coax treasures out of messy, unstructured data. And, um, you know, they went on to talk about the, the shortage of data scientists is becoming a serious constraint in some sectors. And so this article was kind of emblematic of the whole wave that started back then about this sexy job on the horizon for the 21st century. Um, and they likened data scientists to the Wall Street quants of the 80s and 90s that, you know, mostly those were, I think, uh, physicists and um, that kind of people who went out to Wall Street. And so it, there's this, you know, it, this thing out there that people hear about, have heard about, and there's this lore of big data, and I mean lore in the sense of folklore, stories we tell. Um, in the keynote this morning, there were a lot of stories about uh, how big data is affecting our lives, and it's out there in the media. You know, today through the talks, we've heard some of the the folklore stories that are out there in the media that people hear, and then we've also heard more of some of the more technical uh, stories that we tell amongst ourselves about big data. And so I, I had this slide here as sort of a um, warning, if you will, that it's it's a, it's there, we, we hear people hear these stories about big data and think, hey, that's where I want to go with my life. And it's you know you have to be very cautious. We as people interested in data science don't know where the field is going. And um, if you're falling into the event horizon and wondering. Is this the career for you? You know, there's a lot of caution, I think, that we should um, be talking about here. So with that caution, you know, we have in UW started this um, different function machine. It's an online master degree program in data science. And we output data scientists, of course. And the type of person that goes into this program, pretty much it's just any, we don't, um, any bachelor's degree is fine. But we want to make sure that the person has some coding experience, some statistics, and um, probably some experience with a SQL database. So we do have some um, prerequisites, if you will, that are technical, but often they're um, acquired by work experience. You have somebody who um, has a Bachelor of Fine Arts and they got hired by some company and they started doing some coding and figuring out things on their own. And so they might be interested in this kind of a program. So this is the, um, the, the cover, the, the web page for our program. Uh, the image that they pick probably doesn't help with the disparity problem we're having with uh, gender enrollments. Um, I'm working on them with that, but maybe they'll, they'll get that story from me eventually. And so the, the University of Wisconsin Data Science finds your future in big data. And so what it is, it's a straight 12, quarter, 12 course, 36 credit online graduate program. And um, it's pretty much marketed at uh, non-traditional students. And it's a collaborative program. Uh, there are 12 campuses in UW, um, Madison being the research one along with Milwaukee. And then, uh, and, those are the, and then there's six of the 12 are in this partnership. Eau Claire, Green Bay, La Crosse, Oshkosh, Stevens Point, and Superior. And there we are in the purple dots. And so when we put together the program, all the campuses were invited. And these are the six that um, expressed interest. So who's enrolled in the program? <laughs> well, like I said, it's non-traditional students. Um, we're, we're, we're years away from the undergraduate that I talked to who's interested in um, math and coding and will eventually be able to get a job as a data scientist. Um, so we, we are looking at non-traditional students. Typically, they're adults working full-time, uh, many with family obligations. The average age is 37 last fall. 
And uh, most will take one or two courses a semester. We offer courses in fall, summer, uh, summer, fall, and spring. So the average number of courses for students is 1.5. Um, we've got uh, 33 uh, states represented, some international students. And about 43% of the students reside in Wisconsin. Another good chunk will live in Minnesota. Uh, the tuition is flat, so there's no out-of-state tuition. And then the, the male-female split there is, is still not very, not where we want it to be. So the administrative structure of the program, this is where UW Extension comes in. Uh, students will select one of the six campuses as their home institution, and that will be the place where they actually get their master's degree awarded from. And so the, the person selects a home campus, Eau Claire, and then we handle the admissions, the financial aid, the advising, the academic policies, and actually give them the degree. Uh, how students from far away pick the home campus is kind of arbitrary. I was talking to a guy in Washington State on the phone. I said, why did you pick Eau Claire? I said, I thought, if you don't know anything about Wisconsin, you might pick Green Bay, because everybody knows about the Green Bay Packers. And he says, oh, no. I hate the Packers. I'm a Seahawks fan. So I struck Green Bay off the list, and then I went alphabetical, and Eau Claire was the first on the list. So how flattering was that? <laughs> but, you know, students do have to pick a home campus. Often it's because their, their brother uh, graduated from La Crosse or something like that. And um, we have a, a fixed curriculum. I'll show you those courses in a moment here. And each of the campuses teaches two of the 12 courses. The students don't really know that someone from Eau Claire is teaching a certain course if they pick Green Bay as their home campus because these are online courses. And they're all, all the students are kind of mixed together. UW Extension uh, coordinates the course development and delivery. They're very good at video production of uh, course content marketing, finances. They help the collaboration between the campuses work. They're in the glue. This is kind of an ugly slide. It's just a dump of the 12 courses. I'll, in the next slide, organize them a little bit differently. Um, the first uh, starts with foundations, and we've got statistics, and you know, it kind of goes all the way through here. Uh, I'll look at the next slide here. Each campus teaches two of the 12. Oops. Back a slide. So I think of data science as an interdisciplinary field. Uh, programming, coding, uh, statistics, and communication. You know, you got to be able to communicate your findings to your management somehow. And so the 12 courses I disaggregate this way. Um, we got the programming and coding. Um, mostly we do R and Python in the 710. Data warehousing, that's mostly SQL. A big data, high performance computing, a lot of Hadoop in there. And then uh, statistics classes and communication classes. And then there's three courses that don't exactly fit. That would be the intro course, 700, uh, an ethics course, and uh, the capstone. I think this um, publication, um, what type of data scientists do we produce? Uh, the, the 2016 Data Science Salary Survey, Tools, Trends, What Pays, What Doesn't, um, presented by O'Reilly Media, is a very good publication. I think the title is misleading. It probably gets people to read the study because it talks about salary. But when you actually get into it, it really does talk a lot about what people do as data scientists. And so this is the cover to their publication. And, um, in the uh, table of contents, you can, you can see uh, something about how you spend your time. They survey people. Um, the impact of the tool choice on salary, I guess. And the relationship between tools and tasks. And they cluster the respondents in some interesting ways. Um, so one of them is how you spend your time. Um, some people, um, you know, spend a lot of time coding. Some people spend a lot of time in meetings. And your job title is correlated to how you spend your time. Um, 
they find that the highest median salary belongs to those who code four to eight hours, four to eight hours a week. And the lowest to those who don't code at all. The highest is to those who are in meetings the most. Uh, people who spend most of their time in meetings tend to make more, but that's because they've advanced their salary ranks and their upper management or something like that. <laughs> um, they talk about the, what tools do people use, the data scientists, uh, Excel, SQL, and then um, R and Python seem to be the big hits there. And then, like I said, they, they clustered the respondents into these four clusters, and they pointed out the data professionals are not a homogeneous group. Cluster one was kind of people who filled out the survey but really aren't data scientists, I guess. And so they're kind of a miscellaneous category. Then the cluster two is analysts who use Microsoft tools for the most part. And then I think that the data science program we put together is really putting out people in cluster three, a kind of a Python dominant cluster there. And then cluster four is uh, the, the data engineers and architects. So I think that their uh, publication is actually very interesting and helpful to understand what's happening out there uh, with people working in the data science field. They also have this uh, dominant programming language uh, slide page, uh, SQL, R, and Python. Uh, those are, by kind of dumb luck, the programs that we've embedded into our curriculum and focus on the most. So some of the challenges, um, the curriculum, putting together a curriculum when you've got people from six campuses, you know, like we're coming together, what's data science? What is data science? And what was it yesterday, last year? What's it going to be next year? Uh, that, that's a always moving target. What is data science? Putting together the curriculum. And we're going to have to revise courses quickly, more quickly than you would a regular, you know, how often do you have to revise a calculus course? But, you know, we're going to have to revise the data science courses um, every other year or so. Uh, technical software challenges for online courses. Um, you know, we use a virtual desktop for some of the proprietary software. Uh, and then working with non-traditional students entering a graduate program. To me, as the advisor to maybe 100 students, this is one of the most challenging and emotionally draining um, parts of the, of the job. You know, a lot of students think, oh, this is a MOOC. You know, you know how MOOCs go, you start them and then you don't finish. Well, if you start a graduate course and you don't finish, you lose your tuition. And that's not a good outcome. What does MOOC stand for? Massively open online course. So it's a free thing you just sign up and start taking. Um, and then the rigorous academic experience expectations that are part of a graduate program. It's coupled with an inherently difficult subject matter. I mean, that's one of the challenges that um, we face. And then, of course, coordinating academic policies and such things across six campus partners. It's always a challenge. Uh, some closing thoughts. Um, I don't think any one of the six campuses would have had the uh, brain trust to teach all the courses. Um, you know, uh, the Eau Claire Computer Science Department, if they were part of it, there wouldn't be enough faculty depth there to do that. And so the way we just sort of randomly came together with some people and statistics and some people in computer science departments and some people in business communication. It just it, it worked together. It worked out to have this uh, uh, interdisciplinary nature of the subject uh, emerge naturally from that forced collaboration. Um, you know, and then the course design expertise from extension coupled with um, system faculty throughout the state really have come together to what I think is a rigorous higher educational opportunity for non-traditional students. So here are some image credits. Thank you. Time for a few questions. Sure, back there. Yeah. Sorry, I just have a question on the uh, the courses that uh, are specific to data science. It looks like there's at least three or four new courses that were introduced. We have above and beyond the standard fair that uh, exists within the Oh, for this, right? so, oh, absolutely, yeah. So how, how did you go about uh, 
constructing those courses? Were those teams of faculty? Yeah, so we, we brought people from the six partners to the extension in Madison yeah. here. And we just had meeting after meeting after meeting trying to talk about what is data science. And finally, we, we fleshed out what the curriculum could be. And then we had this kind of lottery system where each campus picked what courses they were going to teach. And so it really was just a long force collaboration to decide. Did you actually then construct a syllabus? Uh, we did construct. Uh, we did. Um, we did construct syllabi because we had to get them approved by our home campus. Yeah. And so I made some syllabi, and what actually emerged it was pretty far from that one. I, I said, "We're going here's a syllabus for such and such a course that's going to be taught at Green Bay." And then the person at Green Bay actually designed it. It's not the same as what I had proposed to our campus, but it's still. You know, forced collaboration. Yes? Uh, my question is related. So, on this campus, it takes about a year and at least five weeks to come up with a course approval. Yeah, that, across multiple that was a big crunch. Um, it was. Uh, and the extension wanted this done fast. And, well, I happen to be the department chair. I know the administration. I know how things work on campus. So I was able to get our things through quickly. And uh, the other campuses had that also type of leadership. But you're right. <laughs> yes? Um, I was once thinking of taking a, a GIS course online from Northwest, mm -hmm. Northwest Missouri. But I was turned off because I was told I would have to be online at certain specific hours interact yeah. with other students. Do you have no, that? no, we don't have that. We, we don't force students to be online at certain times. It's kind of work at your own pace, but don't fall behind the model. Uh -huh. yeah, so very more individualized. Because otherwise, I thought it kind of defeats the whole purpose of home to study. Right? right, and if people are um, working, have families, you can't necessarily be online exactly. at 6 o'clock in the evening. All right, we're going to have to move on. Let's give uh, Dr. one more round.